You're listening to The Observing Eye. Pirate Radio for the Mind. Coming at you fresh from the computer hell cabin. Hello, you beautiful lot. It's Friday, the 2nd of August, 2024, and you're listening to episode 76 of The Observing Eye, coming at you live from the computer hell cabin. Every week we get psychological, philosophical, and all manner of introspective. I'm David, and this week we are looking at the occult influence on modern psychology. Now, when we think about psychology, we often envision red sofas, therapists with notepads, people asking us questions about our relationships with our mothers, those methods that underpin our understanding of the human mind, employed in ways to make us feel better about ourselves. But what if I told you that some of the foundational ideas in psychology were shaped by concepts that many would consider arcane or mystical? Yes, I am talking about the occult, those ancient practices and beliefs shrouded in secrecy and often regarded with a mix of fear and fascination. To start, let's define what we mean by the occult. The term encompasses a wide range of practices and beliefs, including things like alchemy, astrology, mysticism, and various forms of esoteric knowledge. These traditions have existed for centuries, often operating at the fringes of mainstream religion and science. Despite their mysterious nature, or perhaps because of it, they have captivated the human imagination and have significantly influenced various fields of study, including psychology. But how do these seemingly disparate worlds of occult and psychology come to intersect? This is a question that I hope to answer by the end of this episode. So buckle up and get ready for a journey into the mysterious realms where psychology meets the occult. Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, a seasoned psychologist, or just someone curious about the hidden corners of the human mind, this episode promises to offer something intriguing for everyone. As we get into this whole intersection between the occult and modern psychology, I think it's crucial to set the stage by looking at some historical context, because history is important. Understanding the roots of these ideas and how they've evolved over time is going to help us appreciate the influence that the occult has had on shaping psychological thought. Now we're going to start with Hermeticism, which is a philosophical and spiritual tradition rooted in the writings attributed to Hermes Trismegistus, a mythical figure believed to be a synthesis of the Greek god Hermes and the Egyptian god Thoth. Hermetic texts, known collectively as the Corpus Hermeticum, emerged in the early centuries of the Common Era and were rediscovered during the Renaissance. These texts espouse a worldview that emphasizes the unity of all things, the correspondence between the macrocosm and the microcosm, and the transformative power of knowledge. Hermeticism deeply influenced the Renaissance thinkers who saw it as a key to unlocking the mysteries of the universe. This period marked a resurgence of interest in alchemy, astrology, and magic, disciplines that were considered legitimate pursuits for uncovering hidden truths about the natural world and the human soul. Alchemists, for instance, sought not only to transform base metals into gold, but also to achieve spiritual enlightenment and immortality. This dual pursuit of material and spiritual transformation laid important groundwork for later philosophical, psychological theories. We'll get on to philosophy later. One of the most influential figures of this time was Paracelsus, a Swiss physician, alchemist and mystic, born in 1493. 
Paracelsus challenged the medical orthodoxy of his day by emphasizing the importance of understanding the spiritual and psychological dimensions of illness. He believed that true healing required a holistic approach that integrated the physical, mental, and spiritual aspects of a person. Paracelsus's work bridged the gap between ancient occult practices and the emerging field of medicine, setting the stage for future developments in psychology. Moving into the 17th and 18th centuries, we encounter the Age of Enlightenment, a period characterized by a strong emphasis on reason, science, and skepticism of traditional authority. However, this era also saw a continued fascination with the occult. Figures like Isaac Newton, who was renowned for his contribution to physics, mathematics, and falling apples, were also deeply interested in alchemy and biblical prophecy. Newton's work exemplifies the complex interplay between scientific inquiry and mystical exploration during this time. Another significant development in the 18th century was the emergence of mesmerism, named after Franz Anton Mesmer, an Austrian physician. Mesmer proposed the existence of a universal fluid he called animal magnetism, not sex panther, which he believed could be manipulated to cure illnesses. His technique involved inducing trance-like states in his patients, a practice that would later evolve into the use of hypnosis in psychotherapy. Although Mesmer's theories were eventually debunked, his work laid important foundations for the study of the unconscious mind and the development of therapeutic techniques that access altered states of consciousness. As we move into the 19th century, we witness the rise of spiritualism, a movement that claimed to communicate with the spirits of the dead. Spiritualism emerged in the 1840s and quickly gained popularity, particularly in the United States and the United Kingdom. This movement was fueled by a growing interest in the afterlife and the desire for direct, personal experiences of the spiritual world. Key figures in the spiritualist movement included the Fox Sisters, whose supposed communications with spirits sparked a widespread, widespread, widespread public interest, and Alan Kardec, whose writings laid the basis for the, for the ideas of spiritism. Spiritualism's influence extended beyond popular culture and into the intellectual sphere, impacting notable figures like William James, one of the founding fathers of modern psychology. James was deeply interested in the study of paranormal phenomena and the nature of religious experiences. His open-minded approach to these subjects helped to legitimize the exploration of mystical and spiritual experiences within the field of psychology. The 19th century also saw the emergence of the Theosophical Society, founded by Helena Petrovna Blavatsky and Henry Steele Olcott in 1875. Theosophy sought to synthesize science, religion, and philosophy, drawing on Eastern and Western esoteric traditions. Blavatsky's writings introduced Western audiences to concepts such as karma, reincarnation, and the subtle energy bodies, which would later influence the development of transpersonal psychology and the whole holistic health movement. Another influential figure of this period was Immanuel Swedenborg, a Swedish scientist, philosopher, and self-proposed mystic. Swedenborg claimed to have experienced visions of the spiritual world and communicated with angels and spirits. His extensive writings on these experiences, which he referred to as spiritual insights, had a profound impact on both spiritualism and the emerging field of psychology. Swedenborg's work emphasized the interconnectedness of the physical and spiritual realms and the importance of inner spiritual development, themes that resonate with modern psychological concepts. As we trace this historical arc, it's clear that the pursuit of understanding the human mind has always been intertwined with mystical and occult traditions. These early explorations provided a rich source of symbols, metaphors, and techniques that would later be adopted and integrated into psychological theories and practices. In our next segment, we're going to delve into the lives and theories of Sigmund Freud and Carl Jung, two pioneering figures who bridged that gap between the occult and psychology. But first, a word from our sponsor. A few episodes ago, I mentioned that this podcast would never be sponsored because I felt that having a sponsor would impinge upon my freedom of expression and artistic and creative, creative vision and all that kind of thing. 
And that has since changed, unfortunately. The podcast is now sponsored. I'm a terrible hypocrite, but the podcast is sponsored by me. So I feel that that's an acceptable sort of grey area in which to exist when it comes to contradicting oneself. Now, when I say I'm sponsoring this podcast, I am sponsoring it with my new book, which is called The Observing Eye, A Guide to Living a More Authentic Life. That's available on paperback and on the Kindle via Amazon, exclusively on Amazon, because there's a Kindle Unlimited deal that I have to adhere to for three months. But you can find it on there. You can go and search The Observing Eye on Amazon, and I will put the link in the show notes or description as well, so you can find it find it there a little bit easier. So the book essentially is, is a compliment to the podcast, and the purpose of the book is to give you some philosophical and psychological tools and ideas to challenge your own perception, your own self-narrative. It's all about storytelling, about how storytelling and narrative shape who we are and our identity and how we can change that narrative. So it's got, it's definitely got a, a narrative therapy vibe to it, put it that way. And it's out now. It's been out for a few weeks. And if you'd like to go and purchase a copy, that would be wonderful. And I'd really appreciate it. So that's my sponsor window. There we are. My book is out. You can buy it on Amazon. Link's in the description, or you can just search The Observing Eye on Amazon as well. Thank you for your time, as always. Much love. And now back to the episode. Now, this is a crucial segment of the episode. We, we're going to be talking about the birth of psychology and how occult ideas played a significant role in its early development. In order to do that, we're going to have to delve into the lives of two key figures who bridged the gaps between these two worlds, that is Sigmund Freud and Carl Jung. Let's start with Sigmund Freud, who is often hailed as the father of psychoanalysis. Born in 1856 in what is now the Czech Republic, Freud's early work was firmly rooted in the scientific and medical paradigms of his time. However, as he began to delve into the human mind, he ventured into territories that resonated strongly with ancient occult traditions. One of Freud's most groundbreaking ideas was the concept of the unconscious mind. He proposed that much of our thoughts, emotions and behaviours are governed by unconscious processes – elements of the mind that lie beyond our conscious awareness. This idea has striking parallels with the occult notion of hidden knowledge, the belief that much of reality is concealed beneath the surface, accessible only through special means or insights. Freud's interest in dreams further underscores this connection. In his seminal work, The Interpretation of Dreams, published in 1899, Freud posited that dreams are the royal road to the unconscious. He believed that through analysing dreams, one could uncover repressed desires, unresolved conflicts and hidden fears. This practice of dream interpretation has deep roots in occult traditions. Ancient cultures often viewed dreams as messages from the gods or the spirit world, containing hidden wisdom and guidance. Freud developed a method called free association, where patients would say whatever came to mind without censorship or filtering. This technique aimed to bypass the conscious mind's defences and access the unconscious. The process of uncovering hidden thoughts and feelings in this way is reminiscent of the occult practice of seeking hidden truths and bringing them to light. Another key aspect of Freud's work was his theory of psychic energy, which he referred to as libido. For its concept of libido as a driving force behind human behaviour has echoes of the alchemical quest for understanding and harnessing vital energies. While Freud approached these ideas from a scientific perspective, the underlying themes of hidden forces and transformative processes are deeply rooted in occult philosophy. Now, let's turn our attention to Carl Jung, a contemporary and initially a close collaborator of Freud. Jung's work diverged from Freud's in significant ways, particularly in its explicit integration of occult concepts. Jung was deeply influenced by alchemy, astrology, mythology, 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 and Gnosticism, and he believed these ancient practices and symbols provided profound insights into the human psyche. One of Jung's key contributions to psychology is the concept of the collective unconscious. Unlike Freud's personal unconscious, which is unique to each individual, 
Jung's collective unconscious is a shared repository of experiences and knowledge that transcends individual consciousness. Central to this theory are archetypes, universal symbols and motifs that appear in myths, dreams and religious traditions across different cultures. Archetypes such as the hero, the mother and the shadow represent fundamental aspects of the human experience. Jung's fascination with alchemy is particularly illustrative of how he integrated occult ideas into his psychological theories. He saw alchemy not just as a proto-chemistry, but as a rich symbolic language that described the process of individuation, the psychological journey of integrating different aspects of the self to achieve wholeness. In alchemical texts, the transformation of base metals into gold symbolized the transformation of the individual psyche, a process Jung believed was essential for personal growth and self-realization. To illustrate this concept, let's delve into some specific examples from Jung's work. One of his most famous case studies involves a series of dreams and visions he experienced, which he documented in his Red Book. This book, filled with elaborate illustrations and detailed descriptions, is a record of Jung's inner explorations and encounters with archetypal figures. These experiences deeply influence his theories on the psyche and the role of the unconscious. Jung's exploration of alchemy also led him to study the work of ancient alchemists like Paracelsus. He was particularly intrigued by the alchemical concept of the Philosopher's Stone. This is not a Harry Potter reference before we start going there. It's a legendary substance believed to grant immortality and transform base metals into gold. Jung interpreted the Philosopher's Stone as a symbol of the self, a representation of the integrated whole person that emerges from the individuation process. Another important aspect of Jung's work was his interest in synchronicity, a concept he described as meaningful coincidences that occur with no causal relationship yet seem to be connected. Jung believed that these synchronicities were manifestations of the collective unconscious and offered glimpses into the deeper connections between the individual and the cosmos. This idea resonates with occult beliefs in the interconnectedness of all things and the presence of hidden patterns and meanings in the universe. While Freud and Jung's approaches to psychology were different, their work together and their individual contributions both highlight the influence of occult traditions on the development of modern psychology. Freud's exploration of the unconscious and his techniques for accessing hidden thoughts and desires laid the groundwork for psychoanalysis. Jung's integration of alchemical symbolism, archetypes and the collective unconscious expanded the field's understanding of the deep symbolic layers of the human mind. As we look at the legacy of Freud and Jung, it's clear that their work has had a lasting impact on psychology. Their theories continue to influence contemporary therapeutic practices, from the use of dream analysis and free association in psychoanalysis to the exploration of archetypes and the collective unconscious in Jungian therapy. These methods provide valuable tools for helping individuals understand and integrate different aspects of their psyche, facilitating personal growth and personal healing. The birth of modern psychology, as we can see, is deeply intertwined with the occult at this stage. The work of Freud and Jung demonstrates how mystical and esoteric traditions have shaped our understanding of the human mind. And by exploring the hidden depths of the psyche and integrating these ancient symbols and practices, they laid the foundation for a very rich and complex field that continues to evolve and expand. Let's continue to see how occult traditions have influenced modern psychology. Um, we've talked about Carl, we've talked about Sigmund, like, you know, like their old friends. And we, we're going to look more now at uh, the 1960s to modern day and see how occultism has crept into the psychological frameworks and methodologies. We're going to start in the 1960s, which of course was a decade of profound social and cultural change, marked by a growing interest in spirituality, consciousness to human potential and LSD. It was during this time that transpersonal psychology emerged as a distinct field, thanks to the pioneering work of thinkers like Abraham Maslow, Stanislav Grav, and Ken Wilber. 
Abraham Maslow, best known for his hierarchy of needs, played a crucial role in laying the foundation for transpersonal psychology. Maslow's work focused on the highest levels of human experience, which he called self-actualization and peak experiences. These moments of intense joy, creativity and transcendence, he believed, were essential for achieving one's fullest potential. Maslow's interest in these extraordinary states led him to explore the spiritual and mystical dimensions of human existence, integrating them into his psychological framework. Around the same time, Stanislav Grof was conducting groundbreaking research on altered states of consciousness using psychedelics like LSD. Grof's extensive work with patients undergoing psychedelic therapy revealed profound insights into the human psyche and the potential for deep healing and transformation. He developed a technique called holotropic breathwork as a non-drug method to induce similar states of consciousness. This practice involved controlled breathing, evocative music, and focused bodywork to access deeper levels of the psyche. Groff's work has been instrumental in integrating the mystical and therapeutic, highlighting the healing potential of accessing altered states of consciousness. Ken Wilber, another leading figure in transpersonal psychology, proposed an integral model of consciousness that synthesizes insights from Eastern and Western philosophies, including occult traditions. Wilber's model maps out various levels of human development from the personal to the transpersonal and offers a comprehensive framework for understanding the interconnections between mind, body and spirit. His work has been influential in promoting a holistic approach to psychology that honors both scientific rigor and spiritual wisdom. Moving into the 1970s and 1980s, we see an increasing interest in integrating spiritual practices into therapeutic settings. Meditation, once considered a fringe activity, gained widespread acceptance and began to be studied scientifically. Techniques like mindfulness meditation, derived from Buddhist traditions, were shown to reduce stress, improve emotional regulation and enhance overall well-being. These benefits align with the goals of many occult practices which seek to achieve inner peace and spiritual insight. The 1990s brought further advancements in understanding the mind-body connection, with practices like yoga and tai chi becoming popular adjuncts to psychological therapy. And these disciplines, rooted in ancient spiritual traditions, emphasize the integration of physical, mental and spiritual health. The incorporation of such practices into therapy reflects a broader recognition of the importance of a holistic approaches to healing. As we enter the 21st century, the exploration of consciousness and spirituality within psychology has continued to evolve, leading to therapeutic approaches that draw on occult traditions. One notable area of development is the resurgence of interest in psychedelic-assisted therapy. Recent research into substances like psilocybin, MDMA and ayahuasca has shown promising results for treating conditions such as depression, anxiety, PTSD and addiction. These psychedelics have been used for centuries in shamanic rituals to facilitate spiritual experiences and healing. Modern studies build on this ancient knowledge, exploring how these substances can help individuals access deeper layers of their consciousness, process traumatic memories and experience profound personal and spiritual transformations. For instance, Psilocybin-assisted therapy, often conducted in controlled clinical settings, involves patients ingesting a controlled dose of psilocybin and embarking on an introspective journey under the guidance of trained therapists. The psychedelic experience often brings about a heightened state of emotional openness and insight, allowing patients to confront and process deeply buried emotions and memories. This therapeutic approach mirrors the shamanic use of psychedelics to facilitate healing and spiritual growth. Similarly, MDMA-assisted therapy has shown promise for treating PTSD. MDMA, commonly known as ecstasy, is used in controlled settings to help patients revisit and reprocess traumatic experiences. The substance enhances feelings of empathy and emotional safety, enabling patients to work through their trauma without being overwhelmed by fear or distress. This method aligns with the shamanic practice of using altered states of consciousness to heal psychological wounds and achieve emotional balance. Ayahuasca, a traditional Amazonian brew used in shamanic rituals, is also being studied for its therapeutic benefits. Ayahuasca ceremonies involve ingesting the brew under the guidance of a shaman, leading to powerful, often transformative experiences. 
Participants report deep emotional healing, insights into their life purpose, and a sense of connection to a higher power or universal consciousness, which is no surprise given it's a substantial hit of dimethyltryptamine. Researchers are investigating how these experiences can be integrated into therapeutic practices to address a range of psychological issues. Beyond the psychedelic, modern psychology continues to explore other occult-inspired practices. For example, guided visualization, a technique often used in occult rituals, is employed in therapy to help clients achieve specific goals, such as overcoming anxiety or enhancing creativity. Guided visualization involves imagining oneself in a peaceful or empowering scenario which can positively influence one's mental and emotional state. Even rituals themselves have therapeutic value. In therapy, rituals can be used to mark significant life changes, release past traumas, or reinforce positive behaviors. These rituals, much like those found in occult traditions, provide a structured way for individuals to process emotions and transition through different phases of their lives. The field of energy psychology also draws on occult concepts, focusing on the idea that the body's energy fields can be manipulated to improve mental and emotional health. Techniques like emotional freedom techniques and thought field therapy involve tapping on specific points on the body's energy meridians while focusing on emotional distress, which is believed to help release negative emotions and promote healing. As we work through these modern applications in psychology, it is important to address the skepticism and controversy that often accompanies the integration of occult practices into psychology. Critics argue that these practices lack scientific rigor and can be susceptible to subjective interpretations. However, proponents highlight the profound therapeutic benefits and the growing body of research supporting their efficacy. The key lies in balancing open-minded exploration with scientific validation, ensuring that these practices are applied both ethically and effectively. But whether it's through the transformative power of a guided visualization, the deep insights from a, from a psychedelic trip, or the calming effects of mindfulness meditation, the legacy of the occult remains a vital part of our quest to understand and heal the human psyche. Hello, you beautiful lot. It's Friday, the 2nd of August, 2024, and you're listening to episode 76 of The Observing Eye, coming at you live from the computer hell cabin. Every week we get psychological, philosophical, and all manner of introspective. I'm David, and this week we are looking at the occult influence on modern psychology. Now, when we think about psychology, we often envision red sofas, therapists with notepads, people asking us questions about our relationships with our mothers, those methods that underpin our understanding of the human mind, employed in ways to make us feel better about ourselves. But what if I told you that some of the foundational ideas in psychology were shaped by concepts that many would consider arcane or mystical? Yes, I am talking about the occult, those ancient practices and beliefs shrouded in secrecy and often regarded with a mix of fear and fascination. To start, let's define what we mean by the occult. The term encompasses a wide range of practices and beliefs, including things like alchemy, astrology, mysticism, and various forms of esoteric knowledge. These traditions have existed for centuries, often operating at the fringes of mainstream religion and science. Despite their mysterious nature, or perhaps because of it, they have captivated the human imagination and have significantly influenced various fields of study, including psychology. But how do these seemingly disparate worlds of occult and psychology come to intersect? This is a question that I hope to answer by the end of this episode. So buckle up and get ready for a journey into the mysterious realms where psychology meets the occult. Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, a seasoned psychologist, or just someone curious about the hidden corners of the human mind, this episode promises to offer something intriguing for everyone. Uh, 
And that, ladies and gentlemen, is all I have to say on the subject of the occult influence on modern psychology. We've explored how ancient mystical traditions have influenced the development of psychological theories, delved into compelling case studies illustrating the practical applications of these practices, and examined both the support and criticism surrounding their use in modern therapy. From the pioneering works of Sigmund Freud and Carl Jung to the emergence of transpersonal psychology and the innovative use of psychedelics in therapy, it's clear that the wisdom of the occult continues to offer valuable insights and tools for understanding and healing the human mind. These practices remind us of the rich tapestry of human experience, blending the scientific with the mystical, the seen with the unseen. Through all of this, it's important to maintain a balanced perspective. Embracing the potential benefits of these ancient traditions while also demanding rigorous research and ethical standards. By doing so, we can create a more integrative and holistic approach to mental health that honors both the spiritual and the scientific. As always, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today. Your attention, your focus, your presence is always deeply appreciated. And if anything in this episode has resonated with you in any way, then I'd love to hear from you. You can share your stories via Patreon at patreon.com forward slash The Observing Eye or on social media. You can find us on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash at The Observing Eye and on TikTok and Instagram with the handle at The Observing Eye as well. Take care, everybody. Much love and I'll catch you soon. You've been listening to The Observing Eye. Thanks for spending some time with me today. I hope it's been useful. And if you're interested in any more of my writing or work around psychology, philosophy, and general day-to-day -day living, please go and take a look at my substack, which is theobservingeye.com. And that's I as in the letter, not I as in the gelatinous organ through which you see. Take care, everybody. Much love, and I'll catch you soon.